It's amazing. In July, we had to PHY 22. Of course, sort of board certified in emergency medicine. But it's amazing the things you keep on learning. It humbles you. Or reaffirms things that you need to pay attention to. So we did procedure sedation on this guy who's like six foot two, 122 kilos, but not muscular. Heavy set guy. Mom and potty four. Uh, heavy set. I asked him, do you snore? And his girl, he said, my girlfriend says so. So I was like, okay. We're gonna get, uh, he was going to get a painful orthopedic procedure done. <clears throat> so with this painful orthopedic procedure, he couldn't try just pain control. Local medicines. He was admitted to the trauma service, but while in the emergency room, they ask us because we're the proceduralist. Uh, we can intubate if bad things happen during procedure sedation. So they asked us instead of asking for anesthesia. I didn't mind. It was ended with my shift. Big guy. Had 120, 120 of ketamine ready and uh, 120 of propofol ready. One milligram per kilo, one milligram per kilo each. Most of us get nervous about propofol, so we give half the dose. Just knowing that in a couple of minutes, it starts wearing off. And the ketamine, the guy would be lit for 45 minutes to an hour. The issue was his BP was like a 100, 200 over 100, and you're like, hmm, got to be careful. That's why I never give ketamine by itself. I usually give aliquots of it to fight off the sympathetic surge that happens with propofol, uh, with ketamine. Uh, Came and causes the surge, and the propofol offsets it. So, guess what? Give him the ketamine. He goes to being nervous to crazy eyes, a little nystagmus, or staring off. Then you have to assess for relaxation. Lift up his arm. If the arm doesn't relax, it means he's already in a high increased tone. And he won't be relaxed for whatever reduction of limb that you try to do or procedure. So then you just have to uh, rescue the treatment with propofol to relax the muscle. All right. So BP rose to like 230 over 130. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should have just given him fentanyl and done propofol instead of ketamine. But he didn't want to remember what was going on and he wanted analgesia. And he already had a broken uh, forearm or a distal uh, humerus fracture, and he had a dislocated fractured hip from an MVC. No bueno. So, give the propofol. Well, one thing. Always pay attention to the patient when you give the ketamine. Give it slow. Give it over almost two minutes. Uh, IV pickup may have been better, but it's too slow for all the orthopedic people in the room who want to do a procedure. So we did it. And you always got to pay attention for any episodes of apnea. So he has entitled on. You see it slow down. You can do some sternal rub. You keep on doing the painful procedure. It usually in induces the patient to breathe. Now, I don't know if he was relaxed enough. Maybe I could have gone away with just giving the ketamine. But I give the propofol. This is when you gotta pay attention. So he's already slightly upright, but at a 90, at a 30, eh, 45 degree angle. And I gotta pay attention to his breathing. Sometimes you can hear it, sometimes it correlates, definitely correlates with the end title. You gotta pay attention. When the breathing goes from, and then his head forwards forward. And there's no longer sound of breathing, he's obstructed himself. The back of the tongue, his head just tilted forward, all the soft tissue in his neck just collapsed when he fully went to sleep. Likely what happens when he snores at night. Sleep apnea he likely has. So then what do you do? He already has oxygen connected to him. Don't just crank up the oxygen, it'll open up his airway. So, face to face or from behind, grab his jaw, but I usually go face to face to this with this thumb and the other thumb at the same time, and you crank up the oxygen. Be careful though, if you crank the oxygen too much, the monitor that's also connected to the nose 
will wash out the CO2 and you may not see the inaccurate CO2 number. Sets go up. Woo! Always be careful. How do you know why he starts breathing again and the medicine has kind of partially worn off with the propofol? The snoring starts. <laughs> For once, I was happy to hear someone snore. So be careful. Pay attention to what he hears and pay attention to the end title. These are the times when the patient will get apneic. And that's why we don't call this uh, conscious sedation. That's why we call this moderate sedation. And some people don't even want to even call it that. Better off just saying procedural sedation because sometimes we get close to inducing coma. General anesthesia. Procedure got done, Ortho was happy, patient. Gotta ask him what dream he has at the end of that induced dream that I gave him.